seek the truth from the source. What I mean by that is, is so many people nowadays, they say the words, I can't, or I don't know how, right. but they won't do anything about it to figure it out. Mm-hmm. You can go to the yeah, source, you can that. go to the carrier, you can go to the actual mentor, go to the source, right? Go read a book, you're going right to the source. Yeah. Stop getting information from other people when you have the ability and the, to, to be as strong as you want. You can sharpen all your sales skills, skills yourself Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Life Insurance Academy podcast. We are so glad that you're hanging out with us. It's another one. We're dropping another one. Another one. Another one. We need, you know, we need DJ Khaled to intro us. Do you think he'd do it? He would do anything. If he knew it was you, yeah, he would do it. <laughs> you think so? Can you give us a DJ Khaled, Zach? I can, actually. Come on, you can. I I'm, can. Gonna, I'm not moving forward with this podcast without an impression. Something that DJ Khaled would say to intro our podcast. Yeah, that was like five years ago. <laughs> you don't think he would do it? Like like uh, dropping another one? Is that what he says? I don't even know. I'm so old and out of touch, but regardless. Chris Ball's on deck. Chris there we go. Matt Quinn's on deck. Right Something there. you can't right. refuse. <laughs> there we go. Like oh, I like it. I like it. So, you know, that really connects with the youngsters. That really connects with them. So I think I think we just reached a whole new demographic for our life insurance. If they weren't Academy listening, podcast. they are now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I do think we've got a really cool episode for you guys today. Um, we are talking about well, we're answering this question, Zach. We're answering this question: How do agents win mentally? How do agents win mentally? Mm. And um, I think we hear this a lot in sales that it's a why does sales have to be mental? Right. Why can't it just be just transactional and simple and you don't even think about it? Uh, I think if that were the case, everybody would do it. That's called online sales, right? Yeah. yeah. They wouldn't need us. We'd just be a website <laughs> and they would click and purchase. That's right. Matter of fact, uh, before I got into this, I was um, at a roofing company and we had a huge hailstorm that came through Louisville. And dude, like trucks filling the parking lot, picking up shingles and things like that. Didn't you set a record for carrying the most shingles up a ladder? <laughs> I, I, I never left the office, but uh, yeah, let's, let's run with that and tell people, yes, I did, actually. Um, but it was massive orders going in and out of this place every day. And the funny thing is I would pick up the phone and I would type into the machine the orders that were coming in, okay? And guess what they called that position? Um, data entry. No, that's what it was. <laughs> but they called it inside sales. Oh, wow. <laughs> they called it inside sales. So I believed that I was doing sales. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't sales. It was just basically taking orders. And I do think um, some agents, they enter this thinking that's how it works. And honestly... I'm sure people get tired of the conversation, you know? I'll tell you another thing, Chris. There's a lot of people and recruiters that frame this industry as literally taking orders. You're showing to the house, you're calling them on the phone, and you're taking orders. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of new agents are, like I said, moving into this industry, trying it, and then realizing it's not exactly that easy until you master this game mentally. Yeah. Until you understand the skill set. And then it is almost like taking orders. Mm -hmm. We have a very unique position in this industry where there's a major need out there. There's insurance companies that a lot of times don't have any idea what that really need is, and they need somebody to bring the two together. There's, There's a need and there's a product. And who does that? It's us. Yeah. And I don't see that that human element until this deep fake technology takes over, but by then it's the Terminator, right? But in the meantime, I don't see the human element being replaced in that. Like, I don't think people connect to people. I don't think it ever will be in insurance. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's it for the, just kidding, just <laughs> kidding. But there's that, that interesting aspect. One of the things I really appreciate about you, Zach, and, and the conversation that you have with agents that's, I think, different from a lot of, from a lot of groups is a lot of groups say, uh, get a lot of leads, make a lot of calls, do a lot of door knocks, which is true, that's important, but you are great at valuing the lead and valuing the client and getting the most out of the opportunity. So you teach people a skill set. But to be able to master that, you got to fix what's in here. <laughs> what, what did you agree? That is that is absolutely agree. That's an understatement of how important yeah. it is to fix what's it? Way up in here, Ex right? Exactly, exactly. I remember when I was out driving in uh, the field, I would listen to um, Zig Ziglar's uh, the art of closing the sale. And, uh, to me, uh, I learned a lot from Zig Ziglar. And at first I, I was like, who is this guy, man? He is down home country corny. You know, you've got to get a check up from the neck up, you know, stuff like that. He had all these, <laughs> these little sayings and it didn't hit me till, I mean, it's like 15 hours, dude, 15 hours of training. It didn't hit me that, the thing that was making him a winner was the way he was thinking and his attitude and his approach and his enthusiasm. And it was transferring through this training. It was mm -hmm. powerful stuff. So in this conversation that I wanted to do, I want to share this idea that kind of, uh, I kind of stumbled across a while ago and it's, it kind of hit home for me about what people are going through. And it's this, um, and I, I've, we've talked about this a little bit, but this this Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. We've we've chatted about this a bit. I'll tell you, back to kind of my style of sales mm -hmm. and the way I learn is I, I I feel like I'm a professional people studier. I've always kind of been mm -hmm. that way, but I'm fascinated with understanding how people think, yeah, how they act, why they act that way, because there's always a reason. You know, what is influencing them how that personality adapts in different mm -hmm. scenarios and different yeah. personalities. And that also teaches you how people buy, how they think, how they're comfortable, their body language. And when you relate to that learning, it directly relates to the skill set needed in, in order to require that. But then you think, well, Chris, why isn't everybody able to learn at that level? Why does it take some people longer to right. Uh, really take off and soar in this industry. And it really is this concept here because there's certain levels that you're going to demonstrate to us or right. walk us through and it will make so much sense and you will be able to identify where you are inside of that. And it's like, it's like a car, right? Mm -hmm. You have to put it in first gear right. just to mm -hmm. get the tires in motion. And it doesn't take, and it a lot of times if you're carrying a lot of baggage or a load with you mentally, it's high RPMs just to get that bad boy That's rolling, right. mm -hmm. but it's a lot less RPMs if you're going 60, 80, 100 miles an hour in fifth or sixth gear. Mm -hmm. It's barely any RPMs to go that fast, but yet it takes so much just to go two miles an hour. Right. And it's kind of all related to these, these needs. Yeah. Um, Maslow was a, uh, was a psychologist in the 1940s, uh, which basically means he was uh, studying people. What do you, I wonder what people thought about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like, look at that dude over there. Just not, he ain't said a word in three years. He's, He's at the park. Every day. Pigeons. Exactly. <laughs> Watching people, taking a notebook. Like the lady in Home Alone, the one from the New York episode that oh, feeds yeah. all the pigeons. Yeah. That's, She's that's, probably that's a psychologist. The, she probably was a psychologist. She knows more about people and birds than anything you could ever imagine. But um, he, in his study of people, he, he paid attention to what people needed, but also the main focus of this conversation was what motivated people? What, what, what was motivating them to move forward in their lives? And as we, as we discuss this, there's, there's really two parts to this. One is on the agent side, right? Then the other is on a client side or a prospect side and the conversations that we have with them. So uh, if you have a pen and paper, this, this would be helpful for you if, you if you have some notes and you can always go back to this and, and jot it down but maybe you need to identify where you are in this process, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but uh, imagine a pyramid, and we'll start at the base of this pyramid. The very first thing that he talks about is physiological, 
these are physiological needs. So um, things like food, water, shelter, you know, it's like, we'll call it the caveman needs, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. You, got, you got to build fire, you got to create a spear, you got to hunt. And, and it's hard, it's hard to move forward in other aspects, other motivations before these things are done. Uh, matter of fact, I, I, I mentioned this in another episode, but that show alone, um, I think I told you about this. It's a reality show where people are dropped, dropped off in the wilderness and they're supposed to um, survive. They don't, they get to take like a handful of things, you know, um, they get to take like a tool with them, maybe a saw or something like that, some string so they can fish and stuff like that. And it's pretty incredible. You're watching these survivalists. They're experts. They could, like they show them at the beginning of the show, and they're already weirdo. <laughs> no, I, trust me. I, imagine, I love survivalists. I want to hang. I want to. You're, you're, you're kicked back with a <laughs> bottle of popcorn and extra large diet coke with your feet up. <laughs> that's right. Telling telling your wife how easy you could do that. Oh yes, that's that's a conversation. <laughs> Lisa knows better. I'm naked and afraid in my house all the time, so I couldn't make it on the. I outside. think everybody else is the one that's afraid. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> That's true. So there's this show alone. And the thing that's amazing to me is the people who are doing very, very well at this, like they have this massive drive on the front side of this, like trying to get things done and they're trying to build their shelter and this and all that stuff. They're trying to solve this physiological problem. Mm -hmm. But as they continue on in this process, guess what happens? You're a smart dude. What do you think happens? They start to relax. Yeah. I think they start to get complacent. They yep. start to have a, a confidence. Their drive falls away. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like they get bored. Yeah. It's almost like they get bored. The next thing you know, they're on the phone and they're calling and tapping out. They're off the show. And they don't give them a timeline. It's like whoever lasts the longest. So all these things are running through their head. But their physi physiological needs... The next step is safety, like security, health, employment, and things like that. So even then on that show, like if you get those things satisfied, but here's the tricky part, okay? The next one is love and belonging, mm. all right? So friendship, family, connection, things like that. When you relate just these first three to the insurance industry mm -hmm. right now, and there's probably people that you know personally, you probably went through it personally yourself. Um, but when something isn't right with your home or something isn't right, you know, with trying to figure out how you're going to feed your kids and you're in this industry, it's incredibly hard to focus on what do I need to say on that objection? A hundred percent, dude. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. how many door knocks do I need to, to get in today? Or how many mm -hmm. phone calls do I need to make? Or, you know, learning a new product. That's the last thing you're trying to do. So it's incredibly hard to, it creates a, a sense of urgency, a, a, a desperateness to you. Um, and that's not really good when you're in a commission sales position. It, it creates a commission breath. The clients can smell it all all over you that you're you can't possibly try to protect somebody else's family when yours isn't in check yeah 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 it's and what when we had the second one here right mm -hmm. um what was the second one security health employment security health and employment so you can drastically see a difference as an agent who has um, been established or has a little bit of money. This is one of the biggest reasons, because we talked about this even before this podcast, you know, um, of a, some possible topics. But when agents let their foot off the gas, just like in your scenario uh, of the survival show that you're applying for, um, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, they took their foot off the gas because they an agent now that's maybe never had anything, now they have $10,000 in their bank account. Mm -hmm. They have a little bit of cushion there. They have a little bit of something. And it, and it takes that flame away or it dials it down um, to where how hard they worked when they didn't have anything. It, it's crazy. It's crazy to see that. And then you start to get to a level where you level out and you feel comfortable. I know I have a skill set now. I can sell this product enough to, to maintain this current lifestyle. Right. But you lose perspective, right? You get comfortable 
in your environment or maybe the agents around you or being a semi top producer in a, in a certain size team, you don't think about what else is out there or what's my next level. You lose that perspective. And sometimes you can do that because honestly, honestly, Chris, when you, when you look at the, the, you know, that love, you're, you're getting that love support and all of that. That doesn't come later. That doesn't come till later. And mm -hmm. hopefully you guessed right when it comes to the program or the, or the group that you're with. Right. Because when you're desperate and you need an opportunity, you need to provide for your family, you need money, it doesn't matter what group you sign up with. You're not even, you don't know if they're good or bad. You won't figure that out till later until some of those initial needs are already taken care of. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's when people start to realize, is this, am, am I fulfilling my next stage? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I don't know if it's, we can't say this is a perfect thing, right? Like it doesn't have to be satisfied perfectly, but it's, it's the motivations move, right? The mm -hmm. motivation and what you're driven by is taking care of the, the physiological, then the safety, and then the, the belonging, friendship, family connection, just this idea of connection. And, and you can see that in the survival show. Um, the next thing, which is very interesting to me, once you, once you have a, you've, you've satisfied to some level some of these mm -hmm. the next one is esteem which is respect status and recognition recognition like you want to be you want to be acknowledged and known and seen so i got a question for you when you're moving through some of these levels mm -hmm. when do you start realizing or looking or understanding there actually is another level above that is it when you're finally through level one or two or three? Right. Or is it as you're gradually going through it and then it's revealed there's another level? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think for me, that's, that's why it was important to have this conversation. So people see that there's, there's hope and a light at the end of the tunnel for what they're, they're looking for, what they're longing for. Because I'm bragging to you for a minute because you're Don't probably, you do it. Okay, I won't. Okay. <laughs> now, no, I'll brag. Ahead, I'll, please do. Okay, here it comes. You ready? <laughs> Thank you. But you're probably the best I've ever seen at getting through the accolades, the BS, whatever's on surface level, and finding truly what an agent wants or what somebody wants out of their life, bigger and better than anything possible. And, and I know you, I've, I've heard you talk to thousands of agents, and it's always, you know, I want to produce this much. I want to be number one agent. I want to do this. I want to do that. That's great, but you go beyond that with their life, their impact, everything they want to accomplish. But the biggest question that I've, I've heard you ask is, you know, people have this drive, this motivation that you're talking about, but then you say, okay, then what? Mm -hmm. Once that's accomplished, then where are you going to go for? And I think that's, a, that's such a powerful question that, you know, all you listeners that are listening should ask yourself as well because if, if you have a major goal that's driving you, there's a reason behind that. If it's to break a, a cycle of chain that your family's been in for generations, um, to be the first one to graduate college, to be the first one to make six figures, to be the first one to purchase a home and move out of an yep. apartment, you have to you have to continue to pull yourself forward because I see and you know Chris sees so many agents or people in their life which they set the bar, but once they achieve that their motivation, every aspect goes down or it stabilizes. They're not on that growth trajectory anymore because of that. They lose that motivation. Yeah. And this is what, this is the cool part that ties into that. The final one is referred to as self-actualization and it's ultimately it's becoming the best version of yourself. And if that's true, if that's true, then it's not about you anymore. It's about other people. That's making it to the top. Yeah and your ego dissolving mm -hmm. and everybody's okay with it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It is. Now, you've said a lot of important things as we've moved through this. At a, like we, We've moved through this pretty quickly, but, but agents have to pay attention to where they are in this process. And then, like I said, it, it all kind of bleeds together. But I believe, this is what I believe, is that there are people who have moved and they've established themselves in this, but they can't keep moving forward because they still feel like they're at this physiological level. Like they think like a broke person. They aren't looking forward to their best version of themselves. So they're, here's a question for that. Okay, go ahead. 
if if there's people listening to this podcast that are stuck that can't move beyond that level what do they need to do how do they do that i i think for them it kind of goes back to understanding that you whether you feel like it or not you are 100 in percent control of what you think you are 100 percent here i'll say it to you whether you know it or not or whether you feel it or not you are in 100 percent control of what runs in here and it's very difficult to feel like that sometimes because sometimes that if you're feeling that maybe you're at this love and friendship and status and, and you've you've experienced some level of success but you're playing that that record again about what it was like and you're feeling that emotion that's what that's the interesting part is you will feel that emotion that comes with it the other part is what did it feel like when it was winning when you were winning mm-hmm. there's an emotion attached to that and you get to decide which track you play is it correct in saying that the biggest force that prevents you from getting to the next level is yourself? Oh, 100%. 100%. You get to choose who you align with. You get to choose what you think. You get to choose your activities. You get to take 100% responsibility for your life and where you stand in this. How does mentorship play a role in this? Well, that I think that goes back to that question of who are you connected to, right? Who are you? You get to decide that. You get to decide that. I have this conversation with my kids all the time about who you hang out with right those are those are fun conversations and uh, they, they're at an age where they're starting to see the value of that you know the people yeah. who they're and they don't feel like it though when you're a kid you don't feel like it and maybe maybe because of habits or things that you've done in the past or or just you felt like you weren't in control of your life you found yourself um questioning who you get to hang out with you get to choose you get to choose if you've got people who are who are affecting your mentality and your family you get to choose how often you talk to them Mm -hmm. you know you need to align yourself with people who see further down the road or or at these different levels who can say hey man we believe in you let's do this together that's powerful stuff good stuff i I love this mindset i love this whole talk because it, it really is true and um when you when you think about the triangle and right and if if you know adam you can throw a pretty cool triangle up here when you think about the triangle and we look at the level one at the bottom it's always the widest it's yeah. the biggest because mm-hmm. i think that's the most people suffer with that and a lot of people get stuck in that mm-hmm. and when you think about this industry as a whole and why it's so attractive is because this is the number one industry in the world that can help people move up this hierarchy of needs faster and better and more sustained than any other industry period. And looking at this is we have to focus and and have a good understanding of our why and our survival of what we need to do and, and to drown out the outside drama, the outside negative influence, because at the end of the day, um, you know, they're not paying your bills. Yeah. They're not putting the roof over your head. Mm -hmm. They're not, actually protecting you in those manners. So whenever you have a mentor, whenever you have somebody you're looking up to, maybe it's somebody that you've never actually met, Mm -hmm. but you study, you read their books or whatever the case may be is. That's really good. That's a really good one. Reading books. Yeah. That is, that is, um, like piggyback mentorship. That's, it's like the right. perfect mentor. You get it anytime you want to. <laughs> That's right. right? You, yeah. you literally get it anytime yeah. you want to. Mm-hmm. But to be able to, to understand that you have a job and a duty to take care of yourself and your family and continue to move up through the levels, and, 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 and it's just it's incredible opportunity to have, to share. But it's, I, would, I would suggest that don't, don't do it alone. Yeah, you know, don't mm-hmm. do it alone because you don't know how many people are suffering in silence. Right. How many agents are struggling with just trying to pay their bills? How many agents that are invited to this industry, um, and possibly in your organization, that are are drowning and they're too afraid or scared or won't ask for help? Um, and 
you know, it's anything, obviously we can do, hopefully they're listening, but, yeah. but it, it's all about finding these different things. And, and the, the one thing I love about this podcast, Chris, is this, this doesn't have to be insurance. No. This could be, this is life. This is life. This man. is, this is survivor, right? right? It really is. And, and I want to bring one, one attention piece, just one tip to this. Okay. Like if you are at that Can you level, give them two? No, no, just one, just okay. one. The rest costs money. <laughs> This, uh, this one tip, if you, are, you find yourself at those lower levels, understand that there's a season that you need to work through and there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So, I mean, you can even look at this pyramid like it's the base is the deep part of the tunnel and the end of it is a light that you see. The best version of yourself is the light that you see. Hopefully it's not a train. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully it's not a train. So, so when you're looking at that, a great question you can ask yourself and just start listing it out is what, how does the best version of myself think and what does the best version of myself do on a regular basis and start doing those things. Now the seasons will end of the psychological needs, the safety mm-hmm. needs, because you'll start surrounding yourself with the right people and you'll start moving through that. Yeah. And I got so. one last piece of advice on that. Okay. It's, Seek the truth from the source. Hmm. Seek the truth from the source. And you that, read that on a fortune cookie. I, I didn't actually. My fortune <laughs> cookies are negative. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, but what I mean by that is, is so many people nowadays they say the words "I can't" or "I don't mm-hmm. know how," right? But they won't do anything about it to figure it out. Or oh, I'm waiting for him. He's supposed to give me this, or he's supposed to make me some folders, and he didn't make me folder. He's supposed to show me how to write this product. Right. He's supposed to. Or, you know, it's always somebody else's fault of why you're not successful. And I'm a strong non believer in that. So I, strong, let me do the math on that, dude. You just blew my mind. Strong non believer of that. Oh, my gosh. You disagree because with it strongly. Yes. At, at, you can go to the source. Mm-hmm. You can go to the yeah, source. You can that. go to the carrier. You can go to the actual mentor. You don't have to. To, to talk to the person that doesn't know what they're doing, you know, five down lines below the guy that's actually yeah. created and has the vision and that's positive yeah. and that's really motivating you. Go to the source, right? Go read a book. You're going right to the source. Yeah. Stop getting information from other people when you have the ability and the, to, to be as strong as you want. You can sharpen all your scale, sales skills yourself. You can watch yep. videos. You can listen to this podcast. You can reach out and ask for help from mm-hmm. anybody in this world. Yeah. Nobody's holding you back. Right. You know, so. That, well, and that's a cool thing. The thing I do like about that is the self-actualization part is what does the best version of myself do? One of the things the best version of myself does is solve problems, mm-hmm. is solve, solve big problems. That's, that's what that version is. So what does it look like to solve a problem? If I don't know how... I can learn how, I can figure it out, I can somebody can teach me. If stuff nobody like else is here, how would I have to do it? Yeah. Yep. Dude, I I want to read your fortune cookies. Good stuff. Maybe I should write fortune Dude, cookies. Dude, maybe you should. And I'll put them I'll put them in like a different restaurant. Or maybe I'll start an own restaurant, right? <laughs> yeah, like how that's would you right. like to go to a steakhouse and you pop open that baked potato? There's like a package in there with like a little note in your baked potato. I love it. That says, uh, be the best version of yourself and don't forget the sour cream. Exactly. Right. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the podcast and tune in next week for another Life Insurance Academy podcast episode. Another one. Another one. Ah, I like that. <laughs>